Okay guys, so this typically isn't a topic that you're gonna see me dive too much into on YouTube. A big reason is because YouTube seems to not like anything that goes against the status quo of what the media says, which by the way, hey YouTube, hey, I love y'all. I am not trying to bite the hand that feeds me, but come on, let's be honest. Big tech has some issues. So you might be kind of wondering what's going on with this kind of video because this is not something I normally put out. I'm gonna ask that everybody keep a very open mind with my video. I am not in this video saying I am for this or against that. I want to raise some questions and concerns that I am having with some behavior that I am seeing from people in our government. And my question is, when is too far too far? We're gonna to talk today about masks because apparently they're starting to do some pretty crazy mandates. And I know we keep hearing the dark winter, the dark winter, which scares me because if you look that up and you look up the history behind that, that, that phrase, it gets really weird. You might even call it a blank theory. I'm not really gonna say too much about it because again, I don't wanna upset the YouTube gods and their bots. However, I think this needs to be said and I think these questions need to be raised. I also wanna give you guys a perspective from somebody that's chronically ill who should be on disability, but disability would not pay me enough to live, so I had to find a way to get better even though all doctors said I couldn't. And thus, here I am talking to you wonderful, beautiful people and my audience. Today, we're gonna to be talking about wearing masks and how far the government should be able to go to mandate what we do and what we don't do. Because right now in Pennsylvania, they're calling for forcing people to wear masks in their homes, in their own homes. And I wanna go over all that information. And I'm gonna give you perspectives as one of those people that you hear most normal people say, we need to protect the sick and the disabled and the elderly. And I've got some issues with that because I am one of those people. I am sick. It should be on disability, but I can't live off of $300 a month. And my point is this country and our people have not cared about the sick, the elderly or the disabled or people on, you know, different types of uh, social programs because they don't have a choice. We even cared about those people in so long. And suddenly the media is brainwashing us to say we need to care now. It's this manufactured selective empathy that to me isn't real. It's not just, I, I'm not saying people don't care at all. I'm just saying people only care when it seems like the box in front of them, whether that's the box, the, the, the television screen or their computer screen or their phone screen tells them to care. So I would like to speak as one of the voices that is the chronically sick and disabled from all these restrictions being put in place that are supposed to protect people like me. I have a heart condition. I have immune system issues. I have asthma. So I am a high risk person and I want to tell you what this situation is like for somebody like me in high risk. And by the way, I know a lot of you watching have chronic health issues. You're on disability. You're on social security. I get it. So I know you guys feel me. And I also want to say, I'm not trying to play victim like, oh, woe is me. That's not what I'm trying to do. I want to have an open dialogue about when is the government over overstepping too much. That's what I want to talk about today. Also, guys, if you could help me out, if you find a conversation like this interesting, if you could do me a favor, give me a big thumbs up, like this video, subscribe. If you're subscribed, make sure and hit notifications. Turn them all on because if you don't turn them all on, you won't get all my notifications. And then I keep you up to date with everything going on with the election, with stimulus, with politics, with everything in between. Also, guys, sound off in the comments. Let me know everything you are thinking. And please share this content with as many people as you think it could help. I've got tons of tools and tons of resources to help lots of people. And I would love the ability to help as many people as I can. Also, I give away $100 gift cards. Very simple to be eligible. This is all you have to do. Like every video you see. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit notifications if you haven't. Comment and share the content. Boom, you're entered, you're eligible. The more comments you leave, the more chances you have to win. So if you leave 100 comments, that's 100 times more chance that you have to win a gift card. Yay, good luck. And the more you guys do these things, it helps me grow the channel, the more I can give back to you guys. Hopefully I can start going and doing giving away one every video like before. Mama is making a fraction of that money though, so I have to build everything. So now with all that being said, I know it's a little bit of a disclaimer, but I wanted to go into that. I wanna read you an article from Fox News. By the way, to people who are new, I, I am not conservative and I am not Democrat. I am somebody who's in the middle, who weighs the information, who hates them all. 
So you can't really put me in a box. A lot of people like to think that I am pro-Trump or I'm pro-conservative. There are going to be things I lean more conservative on, but then there are things where I leave super liberal on. So it just depends on what it is. Just wanted to kind of throw it out there. Um, so this is the, the headline. The headline says the Pennsylvania governor announces new virus rules, including wearing a mask in your house. The state is reporting more than 5,000 new infections per day, up more than 115% in two weeks. Huh. All right, let's look at this. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, as a lot of people call it. I've lived in Pennsylvania, so I can say that. Is planning to take additional steps to address a sharp increase in the virus infections and hospitalizations, including requiring masks to be worn indoors with limited exception, officials said Tuesday. So it says that they are taking, they're going to take steps to require masks be worn indoors with limited exceptions. The limited exceptions, that part scares me, and I'll go into why. In addition, state, starting Friday, anyone who enters Pennsylvania must be tested at least 72 hours before arrival. And if they can or do not get a test, they must quarantine for 14 days. The order does not apply to people who commute to neighboring states for work or health care, officials said, and will be largely self-enforced. It doesn't apply to people who commute to neighboring states. Well, then... How is that really going to be effective if you can't police everybody with it? It's it's like they, they love to pick and choose where the science applies. You know, it's it's too it's not safe enough to go out and stand there and vote. But then it's totally OK to go out and have celebrations, you know, shoulder to shoulder for hours when Biden wins. It's stuff like that. Right. Um, be, if you go to the grocery store, quick in and out and don't do anything else. But we can go out and protest again. I love I guess this virus only hits certain groups of people at certain times. It's kind of a magical virus, says the media. So now this is from the Pennsylvania Department of Health. They say issuing order requiring anyone who visits Pennsylvania from another state to get tested within 72 hours before entering Pennsylvania. Pennsylvanians who travel to other states must follow the same rules when coming home. Does not apply to those who commute to or from another state for work or medical treatment. The medical treatment part too. The best place you're going to have, the best chance you're going to have of getting the virus is going to be in medical buildings. With my chronic illness issues, all my doctors, my specialists, and the people I work with have said, unless you're dying, stay away from all medical buildings. So again, I guess the science just, it's magical science that picks and chooses when it wants to work. Or maybe we just have a media that's constantly manipulating us. And maybe this is why people even question whether or not things like this are real. It bothers me because they try to put it on Trump as to why people think the virus might not be real. And I'm like, no, I th and, and not to say that Trump hasn't said some stupid stuff, because he has, believe me. However, when the media is constantly caught lying and being hypocritical, nobody trusts what they say, and then we don't believe anything. And then we, we look at everything as a blank theory, because we don't know who's doing bad things in the background to try to brainwash us. Because it seems like the more time goes on, that's what we see the media doing. Now, it says, strengthening masking orders. Masks are still required indoors. Masks now required anytime you're with people outside of your household, even if you're socially distant. Applies to all indoor facilities and if you have people in your home, not part of your household. How do you enforce that? How? And is that, how, and is that even appropriate? To an, and what I'm talking about is, I mean, I, I, all indoor facilities, okay, if it's a business, I understand to an extent they get to pick and choose how they run their business. I don't agree with all of it sometimes, but that's fine. How are you going to police what everybody does inside their own homes? How are you going to do that without a massive invasion of privacy? So it says, Pennsylvania already has a statewide mask mandate, limits on indoor and outdoor gatherings and occupancy restrictions at bars and restaurants. But the new rules go even further. Masks are required outside where it isn't possible to maintain at least a six foot distance from others. According to the order and inside where people from multiple households are gathering, even if they can maintain a social distance. Here's why this doesn't make sense. So I think what they're trying to do, right? And this would make sense from their point of view, because I want to, you know, try to be fair. They're trying to look at this and say the holidays are coming up. People are going to get together. We can't really fully socially distance. We can't really make people stay home. And on top of that, 
It's not like you're paying any of us to be able to stay at home even slightly comfortably or on the poverty line. A lot of us are homeless. A lot of people moving in with their families just because they don't have any place to go. And they'll move in with a family member if they're lucky. Maybe we could all take some of this quarantine stuff a little more seriously if the government stepped up and really helped us with stimulus. So what I think is funny about some of this, I'm just going to break down to hypocrisy. You got to be masked to be in a bar or a restaurant. But isn't the whole point of being in a bar and a restaurant using your mouth to drink things, to eat? So you're going to have to take that mask off at some point. So aren't you just doing the same thing you would if you weren't eating and not wearing a mask? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, again, it's like the science magically just picks, chooses, and changes as it will. If the virus is such a big, awful thing like you guys are saying it is, why is anything even open? And then in that case, why are there not more things in place to help people and to help businesses stay afloat? Again, you don't, and this is what I think bothers a lot of people about the left. Now, when I say the left, please understand, I am not talking about you find people watching who might lean left or who are left. I'm talking about the crazy people at the top and I'm talking about the media, okay? I'm not talking about you guys. Same thing with right. I'm not talking about you guys, so please don't, please don't take me offensive. It is not my intention to offend you guys. But it seems like what we hear from the left media, which is almost all the media, including Fox a lot of times at this point, they are constantly skewing things and they want to cite, oh, we're from science and facts, but they only are in science and fact when it's appropriate for their narrative, which is why they thought it was great that everybody went out and celebrated in the streets, shoulder to shoulder, dancing, crying, hugging when Biden won. But we need to make sure and wear masks in the restaurant, but you have to take it off to eat. It doesn't make sense, guys. So it says Pennsylvania already has a statewide mask mandate, limits on indoor and outdoor gatherings and occupancy restrictions at bars and restaurants. But the new rule goes even further. Masks are required outside where it isn't possible to maintain at least a six foot distance from others, according to the order and inside where people from multiple households are gathering, even if they can maintain a social distance. Like the rest of the nation, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, has seen the virus infections explode in recent weeks. The state is reporting more than 5,000 new infections per day, up more than 115% in just two weeks. In hospitalizations, the percentage of tests coming back positive are up sharply. Deaths are on the rise as well. I don't want to give an opinion on this or say too much about it because YouTube will be mad at me, but I also think it's really interesting that it seems like the flu has just kind of disappeared this year with the virus. I guess the virus has just totally killed cold and flu season, right? Just going to throw it out there. Interesting information, interesting numbers. Like the rest of the nation, Pennsylvania has seen the virus infections explode in recent weeks. Governors and mayors around the country have been tightening restrictions in response to the worsening pandemic. On Monday, Philadelphia said it would ban indoor gatherings and indoor dining and shutter casinos, gyms, museums, and libraries. Also from the Department of Health, there's a tweet that says, the virus update as of November 17th, 5,900 additional positive cases of the virus, 275,513 total cases statewide, 9,355 deaths statewide, and 2,588,467 patients tested negative to date, okay? Now it says Democratic Governor Tom Wolf imposed a state-at-home order and shuttered businesses deemed non-life-sustaining early in the pandemic. In September, though, a judge ruled Wolf's pandemic restrictions unconstitutional, and that's a big problem is when it comes to this kind of stuff, what is looked at as constitutional? What's looked as unconstitutional? Where is it going to be breaking the Constitution and breaking our personal freedoms? Now, I want to give you guys some context for why some of this is, at least from my perspective, getting to the point where it's very, very concerning. And I think this is where it's going for a lot of people. Again, look up the dark winter and see what that even means. See the, the, the hidden meanings behind all that. It gets very strange. But then we keep hearing this thing about the reset, the global reset, the cap the global capitalist reset, that this is what this, this virus is going to help us all do. And I'm telling you, when I put it all together, I don't trust it. This is the same media that consistently lies to us, the same governments who allow us to be chronically sick with mystery illnesses and tell us there's nothing wrong with it. This is, I mean, there are too many issues here that I have with this, but here's the big thing. How do you, how do you force somebody to wear masks in their own home without violating their privacy? And let me tell you, it's getting kind of crazy in other places. 
in Europe, in places where they don't have constitutions, obviously they have their own types of governments set up, but we have the constitution which will protect certain things about our country. But in Europe, things are getting real weird. Let me give you some, some for instances. First of all, there's protests going on all over Europe about these new lockdowns. So let's give you, I, I wanna go ahead and go into a couple things. In France, if you wanna leave your house, you need to have your papers. That's right, your papers. What does that sound like to anybody? Doesn't that sound like there was a country, it was somewhere in, in Europe, maybe it was like Germany, where they took a group of people and they weren't very nice to them and sometimes they made them cross over. That is the nicest way for me to say it without YouTube being upset, please infer. And didn't those people have to have papers and wear these weird stars? I don't know, kind of sounds a little similar. Even though the left is always screaming that anybody who doesn't go with their agenda is the kind of people who would put people in that situation. Please infer so YouTube doesn't get mad at me. Now, you have Greece. In Greece, if you leave your house, you need to text the authorities why you're doing it, and it needs to be a good reason, and there are only very few reasons they will allow you to leave. Yeah. And in Denmark, they are now doing mandatory vaccinations. And I want to go over this with you guys. So this is a guy, his name is Robin Minotti, at Robin Minotti on Twitter. It says Denmark. Nine days of protests over a new law that would be able to define groups of people who must be vaccinated. People who refuse the above can be coerced through physical detainment with police allowed to assist. Y'all, it's so funny. My whole life, not my whole life, I should say more like when I was 17, 18, and I really dove into that hole of realizing that all the governments, all these people, all these authorities are just lying to us nonstop, right? When you learn that there's all kinds of people that might be named Jeff and that these people that are named Jeff may have airplanes and they may be doing really bad things on their airplanes and their islands with women and children and that so many people at the top in Hollywood and politics are all in on it, right? You learn all of that, but then you start to learn the playbook of what they're trying to do. And one thing I've heard for a really long time are things about like required vaccinations, microchipping, things of this nature, stuff that most people call blank theories and that slowly our rights are being stripped away. And yet we're watching it happen. And if you speak out at all against it, then you're a bad person in the 1940s from Germany, please infer. Nine days of protests to force vaccinations on people. So then it says explained, what is Denmark's proposed epidemic law and why is it being criticized? So this is an article about that and there's more information. He says, Denmark, protest over a new law that would be able to define groups of people who must be vaccinated. People who refuse the above can be coerced, like I just told you about. I mean, Guys, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. So I want to pull up this article of information here and just kind of so you guys can have a little bit more information on exactly what's going on in Denmark. And why, why am I even bringing this up if I'm talking about Pennsylvania? I'll get into that in just a second. Explain, what is Denmark's proposed epidemic law? So it says, the new epidemic law, and they call it epidemilov? Epidemilov with a B, I guess B, a V, like Victor. So yeah. Denmark. What do they speak? Danish? Is Danish a language? Sound off in the comments if you're from Denmark. Hi, Denmark. Hi. And let me know what you, you speak. What would they speak? Is Danish a thing? I lived in Europe. I should know these things. But I'm old and I don't remember anything. Sound off in the comments. Let me know what people from Denmark speak. And I feel bad because I've been on YouTube and I had a, a decent little uh, audience from Denmark. And I love Denmark. I love Denmark. I love Australians. I love all of you guys. So, it says this new epidemic law would replace an emergency law passed in the spring, which gave the government extended powers to intervene in society in order to fight the virus. As well as enforcing quarantine measures, the existing law empowers the authorities, prohibit access to public institutions, supermarkets and shops, public and private nursing homes and hospitals, and also to impose restrictions on access to public transport. Recent instances in which the emergency law has been used by the government to help implement rules include the partial lockdown of North Jutland and enhanced national restrictions, including assembly limits with mandatory use of face masks announced in October. The emergency and temporary law for March is now up for replacement by a new, more permanent law, which would also ensure provisions for governments to respond to future epidemics and pandemics. 
The end of the hearing period for the new law means that other parties and the public have been able to study the proposed law and raise their own concerns. So the final version of the proposed law may be different from the one that's currently in circulation. And it says some areas in the proposed law that have raised eyebrows include people infected with dangerous diseases can be forcibly given medical examinations, hospitalized, treated, and placed in isolation. The Danish Health Authority would be able to define groups of people who must be vaccinated in order to contain and eliminate a dangerous disease. People who refuse the above can, in some situations, be coerced through physical detainment with police allowed to assist. Wow. I, I don't know what to say about that. Rounding up certain groups of people you see as dirty and diseased and placing them in places for medical examinations and isolation. Sounds like a lot of nice German people from the 40s, doesn't it? Medics have voiced their concerns that the proposed law will give the government too much power over health care as reported by DR. We think these are regulations that go too far and ought to be changed. Camilla Ratke, head of the Danish Medical Association, told the broadcaster, adding that such power in the hands of authorities could feel as though it was overstepping boundaries for individual patients. The association believes that mandatory vaccination should be an absolute last resort and expressed its concern for patients' as legal rights, DR rights. Well, obviously, you have to be able to have medical rights. You have to, and this is coming from somebody who's dealt with a very broken medical system that's misdiagnosed me and almost killed me for 36 years. I'll get into that in a little bit. Additionally, the law leaves the decision of when a disease is dangerously is dangerous enough to bring the epidemic law into use solely in the hands of the health minister. Although an advisory commission can be involved, the government does not have to follow its advice. We don't suspect a minister to have bad intentions. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? You have to you have to think anybody has bad intentions. But decisions on emergency situations need broad parliamentary support. Anders Bike, head of the Danish College of General Practitioners, told the DR. Meanwhile, the law also enables major decisions to be made on the basis of principle of caution or some big, what I'm assuming is a Danish word, I guess Danish is a thing, that I can't pronounce. Yeah, my, the, American, uh, the American education system, super, super one with me, didn't fail me at all if I don't know whether or not Danish is a language. So, without conclusive scientific evidence. So I want to read this again. The law enables major decisions to be made on the basis of principle of caution without conclusive scientific evidence. This has already occurred under the emergency law where the government decided to cull millions of minks due to evidence, not conclusive, that a mutation of the virus in the animals could risk the effectiveness of a future virus. I do have to say my heart goes out to all of the minks and I hope that at least they are Ah, uh, it makes me sad. I can't even talk about it. I can't, I, and I'm not, with that one, I'm not trying to say whether or not I think it was right or wrong. I'm just saying it breaks my heart. That's it. It breaks my heart. <sighs> All right. Focus eyes. The larger the intervention in public rights, the larger certainty there should be over the effect of it. Louise Hulk, director of the Danish Institute for Human Rights, told DR. A further criticism of the proposed law is that it could force businesses and organizations to hand over information about staff and members to authorities, such as information regarding individuals' movements. Movements. That promotes a culture of surveillance, which in no way benefits trust in society, the Danish Council of Ethics told DR. Ramson Langoff, health spokesperson with the governing Social Democrats, noted in comments to the broadcasters that the proposed law is not yet at the final draft stage. We are looking at the collected answers from hearings and are listening to all of the concerns and suggestions for improvement, Langhoff said. You might be asking yourself, why have I brought all of these things up? Because what I am concerned about, and this is coming from somebody, and I've heard the arguments, I've heard people say different things to me when it comes to wearing these masks. Well, we're trying to protect people who are sick we're protecting those that are less fortunate in society. And I'm going to say something, and I want you guys to please hear out everything I have to say before you get upset at this. So to that statement that we're doing this to help those that are sick in society, because how, how dare you not want to help people who are sick in society? Now, why have I heard a lot of this? 
because I'm somebody with chronic health issues, I cannot wear a mask. I have tried. I can maybe go for a few minutes, but if it's more than 10 minutes, I gotta get out of there and I'm gonna have to need help. I tried going to Walmart on my own a couple months ago. I fought blackout spells while I was in there and had to race to try to get outside while I'm trying not to black out. I not only have asthma and a heart condition, the condition that I have, I have a condition called POTS and dysautonomia. They play off each other. Dysautonomia means my neurological system does not function correctly. So for instance, I went for a few years of having chronic fevers and nobody knew why. My body can't regulate its temperature. As a result, breathing in hot air, I cannot regulate my temperature correctly. And if I overheat, uh, especially when it comes to restricted airflow, which I already have problems with re airflow restricted and my blood being able to flow correctly with the POTS, I will pass out. And I will tell you, I have faced tons of discrimination and not even been allowed to go into stores because I can't wear a mask. I wouldn't mind as much because look, this isn't a situation where I'm like, this is where I'm gonna assert my rights. That's not what I'm doing. And hey, if that's what you wanna do, I'm more power to you. I'm not knocking you. I'm telling you this is my intention with it. That's not what I do with this. I physically can't do this. But do you know the amount of places that said, hey, you might have an issue. It's not safe for you or other pe or for other people to be around you in there. Let me help you though. Do you know how many times I've been offered that? Zero. Now, you could say, okay, well, you can order things, get things delivered. Yeah, you can to an extent, but a lot of times that costs more money and that's still very limited. And it still limits what I can do in society. And here's the thing. If I didn't have my boyfriend, I would not be able to function with one of those masks. I would not be able to do anything. I would not be able to even go anywhere. So here's my point. My point is when I hear people tell me, you need to wear a mask. I'm wearing a mask because we need to protect the people who are sick and have weak immune systems. How dare you not want to do that? No, you don't. No, you don't. You guys don't actually care about people like me. Let me explain what I mean before you get upset with me. I bet the people who are saying this have the best of intentions. I think in their minds, they are doing something good and they are trying to care for the sick people. And you know what? That's great. Here's the problem. Everybody I see make this argument to me is they have the privilege of being in good health. They don't know what it's like. They're saying they're trying to protect people like me. All the while, they will let people like me die on the street because people who are disabled, and technically guys, I should be in the class of being disabled. I'm not on disability because I can't afford to be. Disability would pay me $300 a month. I cannot live off that. So I said, okay, I'm going to have to get weird and try alternative therapies to get better because that's the only choice I have or I'm going to be dead. Because we don't have a society that actually cares about the chronically sick, the disabled, and the elderly. If y'all did, you would be fighting for us to be able to get more access to resources, to get more money every month, to get better health care. And you don't. And a lot of these people that are dying because they have pre-existing health conditions, guess what? A lot of them wouldn't have to have pre-existing health conditions. They could be in good health if we had a society that focused on health so we wouldn't get sick in the first place. I'm sorry, guys. I don't like to get too heated. I like to keep things light and bubbly. But this, personally, is really been on my mind and really, really bothering me when I hear everybody telling me it's for your own good. But none of these people that are saying this actually give a crap whether or not I live and die. And they look at me with disdain like I am lazy. When you guys know watching me, the amount of content that I can pump out and the things I can build, the last thing you can call me is lazy. I am so driven, I will make myself sick and put myself into the hospital. That's my problem. So here's my concern. My concern is all this talk of allowing our freedoms to be stripped away to help people like me. When we look at people like me with disdain and like they are lazy and just push through it, and get off your butt, we're all uncomfortable, we're all tired. And basically what I see is people who are angry because they're saying, I'm still a slave to the system, so you should be too. I don't feel good. Well, it's not about not feeling good. It's not about being uncomfortable so that you physically can't do it. Because I'm one of those people, you know, mind over matter, push through anything. I had years of eating disorders. And to be almost starving all the time and run marathons and do the things I've done, you have to have that kind of very militant mindset. So here's what I want to point out. Here's the question I want to pose. When is enough enough when it comes to all this? Yes, I, here's the thing. I am not 
anti this or pro this, okay? I'm not. It just bothers me that people only care when the box in their homes or on their phones tells them to care. And then for people like me, we are guilt tripped because, well, we're doing this for you. And so what I see happening in Europe is very concerning. It's very, very concerning to me. Now, again, we have the constitution, so I hope that that doesn't come here. But my concern is, and I, again, I don't like any of these players in office. I'm going to be very clear with that. The reason why a lot of people think Eileen Trump is because uh, nine times, eight times out of 10, Trump is on the side of common sense. And that's what I am seeing. I don't agree with everything he says or does. I also don't like the hypocrisy that Trump's such a big R word because he has said some stupid shit. Because he has said some stupid stuff and there are things he has said that I condemn. Yet Biden's actually done horrible actions that's enslaved hundreds of thousands of black people. Which one is worse, words or actions? And the left paints the narratives and they say, well, whatever words from this person are worse, but not the actions of this person. And I'm worried because we see so much lying and manipulation and coercion when it comes to the left that if Biden is continues to be president elect, which again, the media can't really call and that's still up for discussion, up for debate. If the left is going to try to push these same agendas in America. And I also am not somebody who can get a vaccine, not because I'm asserting my rights. And if you want to, that's your freedom here. That's your choice. Not knocking you. But it's because I have a weak immune system. That's not something I can do. It's not something that I can do. So what happens when they just start forcing everybody, including people like me, to get a vaccination for something that could kill them? This is the stuff that I want to talk about and I want to start a conversation on. I'm not trying to be controversial and I'm not trying to put anybody down but I am a little bit concerned because I just don't have a good feeling with all of this going on, with the states now trying to impose things that are virtually, it's virtually impossible to say you have to have a mask inside your own house. And furthermore, it's nobody's business what you're doing in your home. Didn't we fight for the LGBT for how many decades to give them the rights to be who you want to be? and the privacy of your own home and within the laws of the United States and have the same rights and freedoms and privileges, which they should. And the fact that it took that long is insane. And I'm watching this slowly get dismantled on the behalf of people like me, who society doesn't care about, with the medical system that doesn't help us, that just puts med that shoves pills in our mouth and on our way. In my situation, a lot of people either said I'm mentally ill or wanted to give me high dose pain pills. Now, I'm also a person I'm very sensitive to medication. I can't take that. I can't take above just a regular grade Tylenol without having issues. I have an issue where I'll sometimes have stomach spasms. They are so severe, I would compare it to childbirth when they get very severe. It is the worst pain of my life. You cannot move and you're screaming. This is coming from, I have a high pain tolerance. And they, what I have to take is something called an antispasmodic medication. They tell me take 20 milligrams. I can only take 2.5. If I take five, I'm going to be fighting heart episodes and flare-ups because my nervous system is very, very sensitive to medication. So I'm speaking as one of the people that everybody says they're trying to protect. If you are really trying to protect people like me, the sick, the chronically ill, the disabled, the elderly, here's what you do. You demand the governments around the world release the technologies that could heal people like us. And you might think this is a blank theory, but I have done too much research and I have seen too much that we actually have the ability, in my opinion, and from the research that I have seen, we have the ability to wipe out so many of these unnecessary and useless diseases and, and, and cancers and different things. Now, why don't we have access to it? Because then big pharma doesn't make money and that's what they need. And on top of that, to keep us sick, keeps us from being able to make money, keeps us downtrodden, keeps us in bad situations, which what's that do in turn? It keeps us as slaves to the system for the people at the top and their lackeys just to be able to profit off of. So I want you to think about this. When is enough enough? When is too much too much when it comes to the masks? I am not saying you should or shouldn't wear them. I am all for let's do everything we can as safely as possible. But how do you trust how far these people are going 
when you know the technology to wipe out the virus and make people healthy is there, we're just not allowed to use it. And what does that say about whether or not we should trust what these people are telling us? That's what I want to put into place. These are the things. And by the way, I'm talking about just mask wearing in general or mask wearing in your home. Of course, you're going to be in a medical setting or if you're going to be like, you're going to have surgery. Yes, of course. And that's in 95. I'm talking, you know, those are, that's for a medical setting. Things have to be sterile. That's a very different situation than just being in your home. And the other thing is that scares me. How do they enforce it? How do you police it? Are you going to have people going home to home and checking to see who's got their mask on? Kind of like people going, and maybe there were Germans that went home to home checking for different types of people. But we're being brainwashed to believe if you question any of this, then you are the mean people from Germany. By the way, shout out to Germans, no disrespect. By the way, I am part German. I learned this funny story. I have a, I have an ex-boyfriend who is very, very German. Very, very pretty guy. And it's funny because uh, I would always make these jokes. What's it feel like to be German? What's that feel? And we'd always make jokes about each other because I always told him just Irish and Scottish with some Native American and some French. Come to find out, I have a bunch of German and a bunch of Dutch in me. And I didn't know that. I told him, he's like, what's it feel like? And I was like, guilty. <laughs> so I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but um, I'm just trying to skirt around saying what I need to say because YouTube and YouTube, please don't be mad at me. I hate that I have to be this person, but when you're chronically sick in this society and you are cast aside and more and more freedoms are being taken away and they're making it harder and harder for people like me to actually live in society, you got to do what you got to do. Again, guys, I wouldn't be as upset if they set things up better for people like me. They're doing this for me, but it's making things for people like me worse, but they don't. And that's what upsets me. You're gonna quarantine people, tell them to stay home, close down businesses, and then not give them any help and any money for months. To me, it's a, it's a very similar argument as the stimulus argument. Okay, I've rambled on a little bit about this. Now I wanna hear what you guys think. Sound off in the comments. Please be nice and please be gentle with me. I am not trying to be at all rude or offensive. I am just giving a perspective and I wanna know if you guys are seeing what I'm seeing, if you have the same concerns, maybe I'm blowing it out of proportion. But it just concerns me how far is this going to be taken and who's going to step up to protect our freedoms in the Constitution. Not because I don't want to protect people's health. I'm all for it. In fact, I'm so for it. I want to make everybody as healthy as we possibly can. And I believe we have the ability to do it. We are just not allowed access. And it really makes me mad. If you guys go, if you go back and look at some alternative histories about the different people who have made different types of machines or devices that can heal so many different ailments and then these people turn up dead and the devices disappear. Like, things like this. This should not be happening in our society. And if we have the technology, then what's the need for all of this? What's the need to force vaccinations on people? What's the need to make people show their papers or text government officials to even walk outside? These are questions that I am posing and I want to know what you think. Guys, share this content too. People you know that are chronically sick, people you think that are disabled people, not that you think are disabled, but people that you know have disabilities, um, people that you think would jive with this. And guys, I'm going to ask you, please, I'm giving away $100 gift cards. Very simple to be entered. This is all you have to do. Like every video you see, subscribe, hit notifications, comment, share the content, boom, you're entered and you are eligible. Leave as many comments as you can. The more comments you leave, the more chances you have to win. So for instance, if you leave 100 comments, it gives you 100 times more chance to win and it helps grow my channel and I can continue to give back more to you guys. So yay, good luck. Follow me on Facebook, Katie's Insight, like the page, join the group. It's Katie's Corner right now. We'll be changed to Katie's Insight soon. We are helping people with everything related to stimulus, the virus, elections, everything in between. And guys, typically if you are new, I do a lot of stuff about the stimulus and helping you guys find pockets of money, places, and trying to help during this difficult time and give you news. So if you are interested, sign up for that by subscribing and hitting notifications. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna go take a break because I'm a little bit heated. Take care, I love you guys so much, blessings. I cannot thank each and every one of you enough for being here and just being so supportive and kind to me. I send you guys so much love. Every time I end these videos, I'm reminded, I'm so grateful and I am so humbled that I get to do this. And I hope I have the ability to grow the channel to where I did before, but if not, I am still just as grateful at the fact that you guys have given me the position to be able to do this in. Okay guys, take care, blessings, lots of love, and I will see you all soon. Big kisses and hugs. Okay, bye guys.